Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about the paper nautilus. Now this whole video came about because I was researching the chambered nautilus for an upcoming video about living fossils. Now for those not familiar the chambered nautilus looks like this so I don't actually have one of the original shells. Now I won't go into too much detail because there will be a video dedicated to the chambered nautilus coming out but they are quite endangered and quite tricky to get hold of but they just look like this so they have kind of this tigered shell on them and all these tentacles so they have a lot of tentacles coming out of them and they are chambered and these are a living fossil because we also find them in the geological record so dating all the way back hundreds and hundreds of millions of years ago we can find fossilized versions that look like this again with the chambers so these are closely related to the nautiluses that are swimming around in our oceans today but in researching these ones I came across a species called the paper nautilus now some of you may be familiar with what this creature is others may not but the name sounds simple but they're actually very complex creatures that aren't very related to nautiluses at all the paper nautilus and the chambered nautilus look very similar if you just compare the outside shell shape. Now this is because they both belong to the Cephalopoda class. However, if we go inside these shells, the paper nautilus has no other chambers. It's a single chambered egg case. Unlike the chambered nautilus, which is a lot heavier shell and a lot denser. And if you actually cut it in half, you can see all these chambers inside. And then if we remove the creatures themselves, they actually do look very different. It is only the shell that resembles a similar kind of spiral shape. So they're commonly known as the paper nautilus, which implies that they would be related to other nautiluses, but they're in fact octopus and another name for them is argonauts. One original theory that came about at the same time as Aristotle was that these paper nautilus used their arms as sails. So the name Argonaut Argo, which is the Latin name of paper nautiluses, literally translates to the sailor on a mythical ship to Argo. Now they got this name because these octopus have these two arms that have this web-like feature that they believed would act as sails. So the theory was octopus would be like parasites and eat the original creature who lived in this lovely paper nautilus shell and they would then sit in it and use their arms to travel the sea. So you can see from these interesting illustrations here that show with their arms up, catching the air and drifting amongst the oceans. So if we take a look at their shell, which isn't actually a shell at all, but I'll get to that in a moment, we can see that it almost resembles that of a prehistoric creature similar to ammonoids. However, on closer look, this is a single chambered shell and is not related at all to any creatures in the fossil record. And these only came about 15 million years ago. So they're quite young in terms of geological time. Now, originally scientists believed that these creatures must steal their shells from other creatures, a bit like the hermit crab, but an amazing female scientist in the 1830s changed this. Her name was Jeanne Villapon Powers and she discovered that they actually grew the shells themselves and they're not actually shells at all and the females spend their entire life growing them. So what actually are they? So she studied the paper nautilus in aquarium-like structures and was able to work out the true origin of these shell-like structures. So this shell isn't actually a shell. It's in fact an egg casing that's purpose is to house and look after thousands of eggs. Now the female paper nautiluses, they make these shells using two arms that secrete mineral calcite and they're able to create these shell-like structures to protect the eggs. Now what's amazing about these arms is that they're also able to repair the shells. So scientists have done work where they've, you know, had a damaged paper nautilus shell and they've watched the females repair the holes in it, either using just their own secretion of this mineral calcite or by using other bits of shell to almost patch the hole. Now it's only the females that create this shell-like structure and the males are in fact eight times smaller in size and come in at about one centimeter long which is very very tiny so the paper nautilus shows something called sexual dimorphism which means the male and the female look considerably different. It always amuses me sexual dimorphism because I apply it to humans and in the case of the paper nautilus imagine if females were eight times larger than men and if we just put it into height that means the females would be around 40 foot tall and the males would be five foot tall and 
just just think about that for a moment that there's species that exist and thrive with that sort of difference i find it just so fascinating so in the case of the paper nautilus the males look like tiny little octopus and they have eight arms in total one of which is a lot longer than the rest now this long arm serves a purpose so it actually amputates itself through reproduction so it'll insert itself into the female and it's the end of it that contains the sperm and it will then amputate it so it can swim away because chances are a female of that size difference will likely see the male as food as well so it has this long limb so that it's able to quickly escape after fertilization now with many species of octopus they can regrow limbs but with paper nautilus this extra long limb doesn't regrow so males only get one chance at reproduction so paper nautilus live up to about a year and the females spend the whole year building the egg casing and looking after the eggs until they hatch and the males will fertilize them once and then that is the end of their life cycle if you like that's their job done so the mother will carry the eggs until they hatch in this egg sac but it's not the only purpose of this shell-like structure so the female can also use them for buoyancy so they can put gas bubbles into them so that they can float in the water column now even though paper nautiluses are octopus they live very differently so most octopus like to live on the sea floor and they'll hide their eggs in kind of protective nooks down there whereas paper nautiluses prefer to keep their eggs on them inside that shell-like structure and also live in the water column so similar to other nautiluses and also to ammonites in the fossil record they use that gas to stay buoyant with this shell however paper nautiluses don't have any chambers whereas ammonites and chambered nautiluses did to conclude i thought i'd share some amazingly done comics by a guy called rob lang now i find these just hilarious especially after you've learned a few facts they're just so well done and so amusing so i thought you guys would appreciate seeing the sexual dimorphism put into comic form and i'll also link down below some of my references and resources that i used to put this video together along with rob lang's comics of course if you would like to check out any of his other ones but I hope you enjoyed learning about the paper nautilus today. It's such a mysterious creature, but has such a simple name that suggests it's just got a thin shell and it's related to other nautilus, but it couldn't be more wrong. So I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit in today's video. Please like and subscribe if you did enjoy, and thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.